From the mountains of Columbia to Pikes Peak, listen to The Mountain Mysteries, a podcast from the pantry studio of Chris Sloan. The Mountain Mysteries, where true crime meets the paranormal. A Pantry Studio production. The following may contain strong language and deals with adult themes. Listener discretion is advised. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. The last of all I won't shed a tear for them to see I won't have your name to call I will be the last of all With over 24% of the 1.9 billion square acres in America alone, the mountains that so many people call home are also host to some of the most incredible mysteries in the world. The missing, the murdered, strange creatures, unexplained lights, and sightings of unidentified objects. These stories may be strange, they may be sad, they may be odd, but they are mysterious. These are the Mountain Mysteries Gatherings. And now, live from the Pantry Studio, broadcast to all time zones around the world, with listeners of the podcast in the United States, Canada, Germany, Norway, India, the United Kingdom, and more. These are the Mountain Mysteries Gatherings. Now, your host, Chris Sloan. Well, it's been a hot minute, hasn't it? Checking to make sure hopefully everything is working okay. Uh, it seems to be. Let me boost that volume there a little bit. Been a while since I've been on here, I know, and uh, thanks for your patience. Um, to say that there's been a lot going on is putting it mildly. Um, as many of you know, in February, I lost a guy that was a brother to me. And ever since the word. He wasn't just the best friend. He was a brother. He was the best friend and then some, you know. And a best friend, you know, is somebody that, yeah, you, you tell about everything to and that kind of thing. Well, Trevor Huff was more than that. So, yeah, it's taken me a while. I scheduled uh, kind of like a... I don't know if you want to call it a memorial or something to him a couple of times. And I just couldn't bring myself to do it. But time makes it to where we learn how to deal with things. Uh, there's going to be a lot of changes. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of changes. Um, the Mountain Mysteries is getting a facelift. We've hired a design team out of God knows where. Um, they're currently at the time of this. And just so you know, I'm not responding to messages or anything else on Facebook, and I don't want messages. I don't need those. Um, that's not the purpose. This isn't about me. But it's about an update on what's coming and what's going on. I've been releasing episodes sporadically here and there, and now we're getting back to the groove of things. And come to find out, there may be some more halts coming up for reasons that I don't care to disclose at the moment. Uh, and, and nobody really, you know, it's one of those things. But we will get those things straightened out. And it's going to be better than it was. I can promise you that. Uh, ideas for the Mountain Mysteries are abound. I mean, some of these things are a little crazy. You know, we released an episode for Patreon members today that has to do with Hopkinsville and the Kentucky Goblins in 1955. Uh, that they believe were aliens. Some people did. Some people thought it was. Uh, to be quite honest with you, kids cover your ears and crock of bullshit. 
Uh, but a lot of people thought, yeah, you, there's something to this because of the evidence that was left behind that was unworld or otherworldly. Maybe. Um, I'll kind of present the facts and let you make up your own mind. Not like always. But before I get into some of the changes that are coming, I want to um, show you something. I guess. I'm going to try to get through this without, you know, cracking tears because, I mean, Trevor would slap the taste out of my mouth. But it was in no uncertain terms that this thing will continue because he loved it. He thought it was cool. He thought it was all these things. Um, he thought it was catchy and unique and different. And so much so that he came up out of his own pocket and performed at April Pennington's Celebration of Life almost a year ago last May. God, I cannot believe. This doesn't get any easier. Uh, learn how to deal with it. But it doesn't get easier. Anyway, publicly, I, I had the wonderful, wonderful privilege of spending some time with somebody that's close to him and meeting his parents just recently. First time in all the years I've known him, I got to meet his mom and dad. And let me tell you, they are wonderful people. His aunt, his mom, his dad, they just. Fabulous people. I love them dearly. Uh, I can see why he was the way he was. He was sincere. You never felt like he was shoveling crap on you. If he thought something and you asked him, he'd tell you. And you didn't have to guess where he stood. And you know, a lot of the times in the conversations that we would have, man, they stung. But they were always the truth. Be mindful of people who kiss your ass. Be loving of people that tell you the truth. Because those are your real friends. Those are the people that count. It was nothing for him to look at me. You know, when the first episode dropped, I'm excited. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is. And he said, you know, it sounds good. Well, I must say, I was hoping for more. And he kind of did this. He went, you know, it always sounds better when you're just you. Don't script it. Kind of like I do these videos. Ain't my damn thing in here scripted. I'm looking at the pilot screen right now for this thing that I just recently resubscribed to. But we'll get to that <coughs> in a minute. He always told the truth to me. And I remember a com one of our conversations once. He said, how long have we known each other? And I said, hell, I don't know. What, 30, 30 years, give or take? And he said, yeah, something like that. And I said, okay, no, 30 years, something like that. He said, you know, in all that time, I've never known you to talk about me behind my back. And I said, no, I won't. We'll talk about, you know, if i got something to say to you. I'll say it to your face. I said, what brings this up? And he said, man, he said, you're like one of the only ones. That was a pretty big deal to me. I had to think of a word, you know, and I asked this on the podcast. If I had to think of a word to describe Trevor, I can't. There's not a word. There's words, uniquely talented, uniquely gifted. A friendship that defined us both. And I got things going on in my life right now, which are remarkable improvements, I think. And God only wish he was here to see it and share with it. But he's not. Well, maybe. Maybe in a way he is. Uh, just so you know, uh, this is pre-recorded. Um, did this earlier in the week at late at night, so 
I just really didn't know how to come across with doing this. And that's odd for me because normally this stuff comes to me like crazy. Yeah, you don't think about it, you just do it. And then I heard this little voice inside my head said, that ain't changed. And that's where it was in the voice of prayer. And my dad. That ain't changed. Still do it. Do what you do. I am not working at Q95 anymore. Um, I had priorities that upscaled a lot of things in my life. You know, in 2019, when my mom and dad died, that changed everything for me. It changed a lot. And then in October of last year of 21, Ollie died. And the guy wasn't like a brother to me. He was, brother. I'm blessed. I've got a lot of people that are very close to me that I call brothers and sisters. And then that day, sitting in the studio at Q95, I got the text from Scott. That said, we've lost Trev. What do you say to that? I mean, my first thought is, it's not the Trevor I know. Only off the top of my head, I know one Trevor, I think. I said, not Trevor, huh? He said, yeah. I said, no, 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 no. And I thought to myself, what a sadistic freaking joke. And then it hit me who I was talking to. Scott doesn't joke about things like that. Nobody that I know or care to know would joke about that. It's like getting shot in the gut. You know, I'm unloading to all you people about what I think and what I feel. You know, if you listen to the podcast, the episode, Tears of the Angels, God said, well, he said, I knew you guys were close. You were the first one I called. You were the first one I told. And there's a billion freaking things that run through your mind when this happens. I'm thinking of his son, Alex. Of his son's mom, Jennifer. Jennifer and I went to high school together. We're, I consider her a good friend. And I love Alex. Alex is just awesome. He's got so much of his dad in him. <laughs> Told his mom once he got his dad to do his homework. She said, oh, my God, you did not. He said, yeah, and I didn't have to show him how. Uh, he's, he's got Trev's sense of humor. A lot of the looks are both there. He's got a lot of his mom and dad both in him. And then came the day that I got to meet Merle and his dad, and I could not. I mean, I just walked in and cried on her shoulder. First time I ever met the woman. And she made me feel like I was home. I had not felt that kind of thing since my mom was alive. What do you say to her? Sorry, just doesn't seem to cut it, you know? The Mountain Mysteries will continue, and we're going back to a weekly podcast format. It'll take us a little bit of time to get there, but we're, we're going back to that. And I would amend my original statement dedicated to the memory of April Pennington. They will now be dedicated to the memory of April Pennington and Trevor Huff. I'm pretty much on my own with this now. Cody and Harold have done what they could do. And they did a remarkable job, and I'm very grateful. But as life happens, things change. People take different paths. And I'm okay with that. They're doing well. They are um, doing really well, which I'm very grateful for. And I'm very grateful for all of their assistance. And now I'm going back to, <coughs> excuse me, um, Kind of subwriting, keeping with the notes and going with that kind of thing. And uh, kind of like I do with these videos to some degree. You'll you'll hear it. Uh, but anyways, if anybody should want a copy of this email to them, you can reach out to me on 
the Facebook Messenger for the Mountain Mysteries or my personal one either way. Send me your email address and I'll send what you're getting ready to see to you. The memory of a brother, a friend, and a guy that I love. That doesn't do him justice. <laughs> Not by a long shot. But I will do everything I can to honor him and give him that justice. You know, the day I sold my Harley and got rid of it, man, what I didn't hear from him. What the, fill in the blank, are you thinking? You without a box like a day without light or a day without sunshine or however it was he put it. And I said, man, it's a box. They make them every day. They turn them out by hundreds or thousands or whatever it is. I don't know. Then he said, go, ahead, go get you another one. And I'm keeping a particular story to myself here, but he wanted me to get another one so badly that he did something or was about to do something extraordinary. Involving getting rid of his. He'd cut a deal and it involved he and I, and I didn't even know it until uh, a day or two before he died and he told me about it. And I was like, you got to be crazy. I said, you got to be out of your ever loving mind. He said, no, man. He said, I love you. He said, we're brothers. He said, we are in this together. 
but the memories we made on those bikes. Man, and there was a lot of bikes. <laughs> the one thing I can do is continue this. And he did enjoy it. And oh yes, I believed him. Because if he didn't, he'd say, to be honest, I really don't like it that well, so I don't listen to it much. But no, he said, what's the next episode going to be like? What's, what's the next thing? Who, who, what, who's ne what's it about next? You need to do one on Bigfoot. Or Dickfurs. It's an inside joke. Listen to the episode, you'll get it. So yeah, we are going to continue the Mountain Mysteries. They will go. And they will continue, and they will get better. Like I said, uh, one of the big changes is going to be the pantry studio. I'm dropping the name. It's going to be Sloan Studio or maybe CT Studio or something. I don't know. You can imagine what the CT is. Yeah. But everything that comes out of it is going to be the best that I can make it. I have recently brokered a deal with... Um, Q95 to do some voice work here and there from the studio. So, I mean, I didn't leave. I, I don't consider it bad terms at all. If I had to go back to radio, that would be the station. And it was. Because I honestly believe that they are great. And um, the people that work there are great. They know the ones I know. I think they're uh, wonderful, but like I said, sometimes, you know, you, you got this plan, you got this roadmap, and, and, and on that roadmap, you're going to go this certain direction, and God says, eh, wait a minute, eh. you're going to take a detour, you're going to do this, you're going to do that, we're going to put you on this way, and, and that's where you go, and that's what happens. So the episode that is dropping Friday is number 46. And a lot of us had heard about the Kentucky Goblins in 1955. I mean, that was before my time, probably before a lot of our time. But um, in Hopkinsville. And it involved two families to start. And things just went to hell on a shutter from there. And then we're going to look in to what is still an unsolved murder or a death, an unsolved death. And there's no doubt in my mind it was murder uh, because he had a gunshot wound. Uh on the body, uh, and I'm thinking it was in the heart, but don't hold me to that yet. But uh, Dr. George Archer, who was also the mayor of one time of Prestonsburg, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and there's others. And I'm asking people to reach out to me. Uh, you can email me <coughs> if you have a case that you'd like to see us cover. And I don't mind the travel. It would probably have to be on a Saturday or Sunday, but uh, I'm okay with that. Uh, I can bring a small portable studio with me. Really, it's a Tascam recorder and a couple of mics. And, um, well, if you've listened to episode one or the episode with Heather Teague, uh, that's what we used. And I mean, they sound great. They, they're, they're top notch quality. They ought to be, but, uh, we can do that. And I'm open, not just to Eastern Kentucky, but there's also ways that we can record things right here virtually from the studio interviews and yeah let, let's get the memories of your family members out there the people you cared about they know and i've learned a long time ago and, and i used to tell trevor this all the time i said you know what being family ain't got jack squat to do with blood it's got everything to do with loyalty and that was one of the most loyal people i've ever met but anybody i rode box with whether it's dave welch or whether it's chris greathouse or whether it's stan cochran ray day uh any number of people including trev they're family they're still family because loyalty is everything in the motorcycle and the biker community. Now, I don't know if I'd call myself a biker. You know, I, I was a guy with a Harley that liked to ride motorcycles. I was a Harley Davidson enthusiast. I still am. Those days may very well be behind me. Then again, roadmap plan, God comes into play. And maybe sometimes, just maybe. It's the people you rode with that are no longer with you, like my dad, like Trev. Because I'm pretty sure they've got a direct line to God. And we'll say, hey, 
And I've learned that God always answers prayers in one of three ways. Yes, no, not yet. But he does not ignore us, even if we ignore him. That kind of love is unfailing. It really is. So the Kentucky Goblins this week and here in a couple of weeks, if I can find enough research, which according to Dave, I should be able to. Dave is a friend of mine who actually suggested that particular episode. And the more he talked to me about it, the more I thought, sounds like it would make for a good episode. Uh, this man, who was George Archer, had a very prominent impact on the Star City, on Prestonsburg, both as mayor and a doctor. He helped a lot of people. He did a lot of good. He was a real leader from what I understood. Did I know him personally? That would be a no. I was four years old when he died. He died in 75, if I understood that correctly, with all due respect. Um, but yeah, we're going to look into that. And there's going to be other ones. And they're going get, to keep getting better. Better than they were before. Uh, like I said, a design team for the website, new logos. Yeah, that's all. That's the wrapper on the candy. But the candy is going to be a little better too. That's up to me. And I can make that happen. I'm in the position now to make that happen. It's funny how God works. Well, not funny, but let me say it. incredible, awesome, inspiring. Yeah, I'm taking up enough of your time. I'm going to get off here. You're already about 30 minutes in deep. But know this, that um, thank you all for being a part of this. Uh, even though it's pre-recorded, and most of these from here on out will probably be pre-recorded. The occasional live one, and if it is, I'll say live. But uh, thanks for your support. I hope that you'll support us on Patreon. You will get early episodes or the episodes early, I should say. Uh, and they will be commercial-free. And, um, yeah, there may be some other things. But, you know, if you just talk to people about it, that's a big deal. But, yeah, the funding goes a long way to help offset the cost for the video stream that you're watching this on, traveling to do the interviews and whatever. But if not, just tell people about us. When I left... Or took my break. We were heard in 32 countries around the world. Ranked in the top 5% globally. I don't even know where it's at now. I don't care. This ain't about rankings. This isn't about... How many places we're heard. The more the better, though. So I hope that you will listen. I hope that you will watch. And I hope that you will share this. Because I think that these people need to be remembered. They have the right to be remembered. They were human beings. Pebble in a pond, folks. Pebble in a pond. Every life affects other lives in ways that we can't even imagine. And that's just a fact. I'm Chris Sloan. And until the next time, stay mysterious. <laughs>
a Pantry Studio production. <laughs>